Open shortest path first is identified by an RFC. That RFC is 2328, and you can just Google for that if you really want to dive into the details of open shortest path first. Now, OSPF maintains three separate tables in order to dynamically create the routing table. All right, with the routing table being one of these three tables. So the first table it's going to create is called the neighbor table. The neighbor table uses something called the hello protocol to build neighbor relationships. So just like we would do when you move into a new house, you go introduce yourselves to your neighbor, you shake hands, you exchange pleasantries, and hopefully you build a good relationships so that you can later go ask for assistance when you need help holding a ladder or lifting something heavy or moving a couch things like that right we we want to build those good neighbor relationships in our lives well ospf since it's a, a computer program and purely logical when it builds neighbor tables it's not really concerned about pleasantries it's more concerned about if its neighbor is there or if it isn't there if it's responding or not so we use the neighbor table to build some relationships so that we can then exchange information to build what's called the link state database or LSD. This is built by propagating another type of packet called an LSA or link state advertisement. And that link state advertisement is propagated between the neighbors. So we propagate these LSAs and the LSAs contain information about the network links that our routers know about. So what the LSA is going to do is it's going to send out information about the links that the router knows about. I have, a, I have a graphic for this in a moment. And then what happens is we use the link state database. We take that, run an algorithm against it called Dijkstra's algorithm or the shortest path first algorithm, and that builds the routing table. So let's take a look a bit at how these three tables are built. So the neighbor table is built using something called the hello protocol, all right? And the hello protocol does this. It sends out a message every few seconds saying, hello, neighbor, hello, neighbor, hello, neighbor, all right? So periodically, we're sending out these hello messages telling our neighbor that we're there just saying hello. And our neighbor is going to do the same thing. So our neighbor is also going to send the hello messages. And before you know it, all of our neighbors are sending these hello messages periodically. Now, fortunately, these hello messages are very tiny. But what these messages do is they maintain the state of our neighbor table. So as long as a router is receiving hellos from its neighbor and the hellos are fashioned in the appropriate manner, we will build a neighbor adjacency or a neighbor relationship with another router. So in this case, router 2 is neighbors with router 1 and router 3. Router 3 is neighbors with router 2 and router 1. And router 1 is neighbors with router 2 and router 3. So once the neighbor table is built and we have neighbor relationships, we can then send out link state advertisements. Now a link state advertisement is a packet that contains information about the networks that are directly connected to the router that's advertising. All right, so in the case of router 2 here, router 2 can send out an LSA about network 10.0.8.0. It's going to send out an LSA about 172.16.10.4 and one about 172.16.10.0. And what happens with the LSAs is the LSAs are propagated through the network. The neighboring router will receive the LSA. It will add the information into its link state database, and then it will increment a sequence number and forward the LSA onto the next router that it is neighbored with, or all of its neighbors, actually. When router 3 then receives this, it's going to forward it on back to router 2. Router 2 will look at the sequence number and see that it's actually the LSA that it had sent out originally and throw it away. But what's happening here is these LSAs are going to be propagated from all the routers to all the neighbors, and they're going to advertise information about all of the networks that are directly connected to the router. This is the key to dynamic routing. In dynamic routing, we want to have our router advertise to other routers which networks we can reach. 
and we're going to let the nature and the topology of the network allow our other routers to build their link state database and then figure out how to reach us. This is in contrast to static routing, where in static routing, we are actually building routes for networks that our router does not know how to reach. So in static routing, we are going to figure out how to reach networks that we don't know about. If we're on router 2 here, remember we have to build the static route to reach network 10.0.10.0. In dynamic routing, we tell the router which networks we want to advertise, and then the routing protocol tells the other routers about it. So once the link state database is created through these LSAs, we then run the shortest path first algorithm or Dijkstra's algorithm against it, and that builds the routing table. In our routing table, we can see our OSPF routes here. They have an O in front of them. And remember, OSPF has an administrative distance of 110. So once our routing table is built, then we can begin routing packets. Let's take a look at the network diagram we're going to configure here. 